Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This match is going to be between Amal Kaur, who I believe is representing Rutgers. He's going up against QXC, who is from Harvey Mudd College. Special shout out to all those guys at Harvey Mudd. They're pretty regular tenders to the USL final stuff. Well, whenever we have the, the finals parties down here in San Diego, they're an awesome group of guys. And yeah, huge shout out to them at large. Three o'clock position. Well, what is this? That's definitely not three o'clock. Six o'clock, five o'clock. 5 o'clock position, we have Amel, again for Rutgers, starting at the whatever position this is. 5 o'clock, I'll call it. It's a little 3, 4, 5. Yes, 5. 12 o'clock, <laughs> I have to count it off one of those nights. Um, and QXC starting at the 12 o'clock position as the Brown Terran. This is going to be on Moon Glaive, which reminds me a lot of Return to the King, because you kind of have this layered effect, where really you don't have to worry about getting drops for the ramps as much. Um, on this map, but you do have kind of that layered inverted thing, almost like Byzantium, where if you get position early, you can really abuse this high ground and use kind of the, the fewer units. I feel like Terran have had a lot of trouble on this map because, yes, it's difficult to take this natural secondary. I mean, look how wide it is. So if you go a lot of Dragoons early, it can be very difficult to take that. And additionally, if you just kind of seal off this corridor right here, you have kind of three easy defendable bases. You've got the main here, you can support troops back here, uh, and then, yeah, this little, just kind of a nice blockade right there can give you three sealed off bases for Protoss. So whereas Terran is already delayed on taking your natural expansion, um, so you really got to do something special to start. I think uh, kind of fake doubles and two factory pushes are the way to go, honestly, even though this is a hard map to do that sort of, all those shenanigans on, considering kind of a high ground advantage and things like that. We'll see what Ammo's up to. It looks like he is going for a standard build, not doing anything too cheesy. He is going to get the scout right off the bat, but it looks like QXC is up to something a little bit more creative, a little bit more um, a little bit more risky, actually, leaving his front door open against Dragoons. He's definitely dedicated to playing more aggressive now, uh, also putting down that gas before his barracks is finished. He's going to need to produce a lot of Marines to defend his front. He's definitely playing in a more of aggressive stance, and he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him if he's going up against kind of two-gate Dragoon, especially because he just could get absolutely sealed in his natural secondary. And additionally, yeah, just going for any of those attacks, if you engage the Dragoons along here or along here, it can be very, very difficult. So all the Dragoons have to do is just engage midfield and back up. Uh, to where they know they kind of have that high ground advantage and, and kind of press from there. And I think that's one of the reasons just Protoss have field days on uh, maps like these. It looks like we do have a couple of Marines being produced. Still QXC not able to scout, which is going to provide him some difficulties. Looks like we are in fact seeing a 10-15 gate on the opposite end from Ammo. He's building that uh, first, uh, sorry, that second gateway on 15 supply, first gateway on 10 supply. And uh, just going to pump a lot of Dragoons early, try to deny that natural expansion as long as possible, and tr probably, I would assume, follow that up with two Nexuses to get that quick economic kind of switch. And there's that factory. You already have one Marine out in the field, a couple more Marines, that SEV finally coming back around to see these two gateways, and a little bit of a meandering probe, so might see some creativity here from Amel. He, at the moment, has supply capped himself, but it looks like he's going to put a pylon down here at the 1 o'clock position and go for some degree of proxy tech, which could really, really actually throw QXC off. Uh, first of all, I kind of like this because the Dragoons are going to come out early and in mass, so they should be able to pick off that SCV sooner rather than later, which will definitely put him a little bit in the dark. The one thing he's going to have to worry about, the, he's going to have to think about the timing of is the fact that he's there's not going to be dragoons on the front door for quite some time and he's also going to be out of position if he needs to defend against any sort of aggressive pressure that's going to be running up out towards his main looks like a machine shop being plopped on already have four marines looks like we're probably going to i assume he's going to go up to six and uh, play that but right now qxc doing a fantastic job of keeping his scv alive inside this base and not seeing the number of Dragoons he, I think, was hoping to see, um, and sending, it looks like, three Dragoons already out in the front. Looks like, interestingly enough, Amel is starting to push them out, and kind of curious about his build here. He's starting to move these Dragoons. It looks like a little bit scattered, leaving one Dragoon. Maybe he's trying to give the impression that he's sending uh, more Dragoons kind of out to the front than he is, that he's just leaving one Dragoon back. But I think uh, QXC might might have sniffed this out. He's already got one tank, he's got some spider mines, and what he really needs to do is just kind of play a little bit more defensively until he gets a good idea of what's going on, rather than kind of overextending himself and sending the six marines out a little bit too far. Unfortunately, bad numbers for Amel. He just sent these dragoons out too far. Again, wants to engage on the low ground rather than the, uh, I'm sorry, on the high ground rather than the low ground. Might be able to pick off a couple of marines right here. He's now at the high ground. Doesn't have a lot of dragoons, and again, QXC's got to be somewhat confused going up against this. It looks like robotics facility just getting started. 
started. First of all, he's not seeing any additional tech in the main. He's not seeing a natural secondary being planted. He only saw two Dragoons on the front door. And he's got to be thinking at this stage, proxy tech. I'm playing against a player who, who in theory, knows what he's doing, um, who, in theory, uh, is one of the better players in the league. So got to think that he's up to something really creative, a little bit uh, more tricky. And he's already got that. Yeah, he's just going to play a little bit more defensively rather than pressing that attack forward. Um, mine's planted an ammo actually running into this, even though he doesn't have, it uh, looks like gate, uh, looks like that shuttle or reaver ready at all. And uh, going to pay for it, losing both zealots, a couple dragoons. And even against kind of a basic fast expansion attack like he saw, I can't... Um, can't believe he decided to press that in. He just didn't have the troops to get it done. It looks like a zealot uh, fling right now, and now he's going to have a little bit of trouble defending his main. And he's actually in no position to take his main. He's going to be quite a bit delayed. Um, has dropped. Maybe that was a tactic maneuver to try to draw these troops forward uh, to try to br bring this attack to to his front door. But honestly, I wonder if he's going to need to bring that shuttle and that reaver down to just defend his front. He's got a pylon right there to distract a little bit of that fire. It was very, actually very nice micro right there, able to take that vulture out, but still. Uh, tanks, marines, maybe siege tech coming up shortly, definitely mines, and uh, we might see QXC get a good contain right off the bat. It needs to be uh, the one thing that would not work out for QXC in this kind of scenario, though, is this, is if the reaver is there and he doesn't have anything to defend back to, to kind of really deal with it. And let's see, once he sees this, looks like he unseached his tank. I, I like this, actually floating this barracks out there just to get a good look. And this is a really, really late proxy reaver um, to, to kind of really press this attack in. It looks like he's still, pr I'm not sure why he's pressing this attack on the front door, um, but uh, he's going to get a, maybe two Dragoons out of this. Looks like he is going to get two Dragoons out of this. Um, only a couple of Marines left actually might get an additional Dragoon. But at the very least, he needs to conserve a little bit of troop, maybe bring that back to his main uh, to defend basically both his main and his natural secondary. It's really up to Amel to do something amazing, though, with this Reaver drop to catch up. First of all, he's, he's significantly behind the economics game. QXC was able to get his second base up way, way, way before he was. Additionally, um, he's lost a lot of troops. He's just not really in an aggressive position. So he needs to kill a lot of SCVs, and he needs to do it in a hurry, and it looks like he's going to need to do it with a couple of troops underneath. It looks like he is going to be able to stop. Um, uh, he's able to get one shot off, but it doesn't look like he's able to get anything uh, there. A little bit of a... A little bit of luck right there. I think he might have been able to get a shot off on those two siege tanks before they were really prepared off, maybe dropped in, dropped out. Natural secondary somewhat exposed. Mine a little bit to north. It's going to get one vulture, but just one. He really needs to get the SCVs. He's he's delaying mining, but he's not halting mining. And it's still two bases versus everything else. And there's three mines underneath right there. Need to be very careful about that. Uh, siege tanks moving forward. And actually, I think the opportunity for attack has now passed. Um, yeah, there's a turret there to that corner. There's um, actually, I think he might have been better off targeting targeting that uh, SCV, building that turret, provide him a little bit more space right there. Wandering in the base, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get any SCVs kills. Might in fact, might in fact lose his shuttle and loses his shuttle there as well. And pressing in some dragoons on the front um, with some zealots and just playing way over aggressive for the position he's in. Um, and I got to say, he's in a terrible spot now. QXC can just sit back. Uh, take his time, get a good troop count up. Actually, if he decides to be aggressive, he could probably end the game in not too long, because let's even take a look at the supply counts. It looks like they're dead even, and not a good position for you Protoss-wise when you're dead even versus the Terran, and he's had his second base up for quite some time. Not quite sure what Amel can do to really follow this up uh, to, to, to basically win this match, because he's just uh, so severely behind economically, wasn't able to get anything done. Um, to the north, looks like he might be able to get a barracks, which might slow down some additional factory production. I don't even think he's going to get be able to pick that barracks off and be able to push it back at the very least. But um, it looks like he's going to plan his nexus to the north. Uh, that's wow, uh, which is really going to spread him thin against a superior army uh, troop count. He's basically got to pray that QXC just completely plays utterly defensively, and then he can just stop these vultures cold as they're just moving out in the field, because this is a pretty, uh, without really cutting off this section, where is it, right there, and kind of cutting off towards your third, your natural secondary, the vultures can actually swing all the way around, really do some damage toward that rear, maybe even push up to that one o'clock, there's, um, I guess it's a little bit more defensible defending that choke rather than that third's choke against these vultures, but you're still spreading yourself very, very thin. You still probably should be worrying about getting contained overall. Um, QXC 
not actually keeping up with his uh, SCV saturation as much as I thought he could have during that time period. So that uh, he's not as far ahead as I thought. He